Hallelujah. Because he's so worthy on today. He's an awesome God. And because he's an awesome God, he deserves an awesome praise on today. I thank God that you are here today. I thank God that we traveled over the highway and the byways safely. We saw so many accidents and so many things going on on the highway, people driving like they didn't have any sense. But God, grace and mercy is so awesome. Sometimes we just take it for granted. We don't realize how awesome God is until we see another person's situation that they may be going through. But you know what? That's why we have our testimony. So when people have gone through something or they're going through something, they're right in the middle of going through something, our testimonies can uplift and encourage them to keep on keeping on for the Lord and to keep doing what God has asked them to do. Because God wants you to look up into the hills from where your help comes from. That means when things don't look like it's going right, when it don't look like you're getting anywhere in your situation when it looks like all gloom and doom is right ahead God said keep pressing toward the mark press toward the mark for the uh, high calling of Christ Jesus that means when it doesn't look like it's gonna happen God said just keep on keeping on look straight ahead don't look to the right nor to the left and know that God is in control of it all you know already I gotta talk about a hustler on today I wasn't going to anytime soon, but God said, now is the time. So when Pastor said, uh, you up on the 10th, are you off? I said, I'm off. He said, all right, your turn. So here I am. You know what? When um, God gave me this uh, awesome book to write, he did all the interpreting. He did all of the uh, uh, choreographing. He did everything. I was just a willing vessel with a pen in my hand, sitting up, writing, sometimes waking right up with the notepad right beside my bed on the table and um, began to write as soon as I woke up. So God illustrated and orchestrated everything that's in the book. So I'm just thanking God today for what he did. Wendy was just an instrument that he used. God has called us to do different things for him. Whatever your gift and calling is, he's given all of us a measure of it. But whatever your gift and calling is, God said, put it to use. Today is the day. You may have a denial somewhere. You may have a delay somewhere. But God said it's not a denial. It's not always going to be that way. If somebody denied you credit for something, he said, that's not forever. He said, understand one thing. It's temporary. It's always temporary. He said, so understand that you need to do what you're supposed to do and look forward. Don't look back on what happened in the past. I want you to look forward, son. I want you to look forward, daughter, and know that you can succeed and know that you can go forth with power and demonstration. Amen? I want you to turn to Psalms 46 and 1 because I want to encourage you on today. And if you would please stand. Amen, amen. And Psalms 46 and 1, and when you're there, please say amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Pastor, what does your interpretation say? God is our strength, refuge, and strength. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen, amen. And another interpretation said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. You may be seated. Understand, when the trouble comes, he is your refuge. He is your strength. And he's right there presently trying to, always interceding, even though you're trying to uh, not even understand what you're going through. God said, I am. I am your refuge and your strength in the very present help in your time of trouble. God is so good. And when, you know, when I was uh, back in Akron, Ohio, and we would be sitting in church, and I would listen to my cousin testify, and she would get up front, and she would say, you know, I'm a hustler. I get my hustle on. I got two jobs, and I get my job done, and I make my extra money to pay my bills, and I would be sitting there be like, ugh. Couldn't she use a better word than hustler, hustle? That's not a church word. I'm sitting there looking churchy and wondering, why can't you use a better word than hustle or hustler? And I kept thinking about it as I was writing the book. I said, ooh. I think I owe her an apology because that's the the word that God put on her heart to to, to say her testimony. When things don't look like they should for other people and 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 concerning your circumstance, you don't have to uh, bow down to what they want you to do or what you're supposed to look like according to what they say or what they think. You do what God has told you to do. So when I wrote this book, I said, God, surely there's another word you want me to use beside hustler. I mean, let's use a more churchy word like, you know, 
I don't know. Give me a better word. Give me another word. God said, this is the best word. This is going to get the people's attention. This is going to help people say, hey, this is what I've been doing all my life and didn't even realize it. But understand, hustler doesn't mean just like the hustler on the Martin Lawrence show. You know how hustle man got his hustle on. He had stuff all in his jacket when he opened it up and you could buy anything that was in his jacket. That's not what God is talking about. We're not talking about illegal hustling. We're talking about all legal. Amen. Meaning when you do what you need to do for God, you're energetic about it because the, the uh, definition of hustle and hustler is doing something energetically. Getting your hustle on, doing it wholeheartedly, not wondering and thinking what other folks is worrying about, but what you want to do to get it done and get it done right. When you're getting your hustle on, you want to get it done right. So God said, get your hustle on. What is it that I've gifted you with? What is your talent? I've given you gifts and talents. Many, some people got many gifts and talents, and they all bottled up in their head, and they haven't even birthed what it is God wants them to birth. It's just sitting inside them, sitting dormant. Sitting dormant. And in um, Psalms 46 and 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. Sometimes God just wants to speak to you. We're so busy getting our hustle on and doing what it is we're supposed to do. But when God said, okay, sit still, son, sit still, daughter, we're so out there and so busy that we're not even paying attention to what God is saying to us. When I was writing the book, God was saying, okay, write this, put, the, put it down. Okay, write this. And for like three months, I didn't pick my pen or, and paper back up. And I was like, well, I'm supposed to be writing this book, God. Well, you know, what else do you have me to say? God said, be still, know that I'm God. Just sit still and know that I know what I'm doing. You just be ready when I say pick up the pen, pick up the paper, and get to writing again. When God told me to open up my daycare, he used my husband because I was not going to do it. I was comfortable working for somebody else. I was at peace where I was. It wasn't the best job, but I liked what I was doing. I enjoyed working with children. So I was working at a daycare for years, 11 years. And then when I got my CDA, Child Development Associate, Pastor said, why don't you open up your own? I said, oh, no, I'm good, I'm good. He said, no, you, you really need to open up your own. So he pushed me out there. So sometimes God will put somebody right in your path, your spouse, your family members, your friend, not to d- distract you or deter you to not to do this thing, but to encourage you. So when he said, yeah, we're gonna open, you're going to open it up right here in our home. We're going to do this. I said, all right. And once I start taking that one step, God started revealing things. And my first concern was where the kids going to come from. Well, I already worked at a daycare. And when I turned in my two weeks notice, the parents start coming to me because the other teachers were telling them Wendy's leaving. So then they start coming to me. Where's your daycare going to be? What's, you know, what's your name? What's your, what's your uh, name of your daycare? What's your telephone number? Pastor got my business cards ready. I handed them out. So I took a step. God took two steps. I took another step. God took 10 steps. So his multiplication was just moving and moving and moving. And I started um, understanding what God was doing because I was obedient. But I did know that I had to stop and be still and listen to him and not do it on my own accord. He used you, Pastor. And when you spoke to me, I went for it. Not worrying and wondering what was going to go on, but I did use caution. I knew I had to have the finances to do it. I knew I wasn't going to get a loan to do it because our finances weren't going to allow us to do that. We couldn't afford another bill coming in the house. So I knew I had to be cautious and I had to use wisdom um, concerning the business. And then when Pastor was told by God that we were going to move down here, he still had to be still and know that God was in control because it was four years before we actually got down here. So we still, even though we're getting our hustle on, we're getting everything right, we're getting our, our things together, we we lining up everything in a row so that we can be uh, awesome at what we're, got, what we're doing and what God has told us to do. When God has told you to do something, it's not going to fail. It might be a little delay, but it's not going to be your denial, meaning it's not ever going to come to pass. If you look into the hills from where your help comes from, God is your help in the present time of your trouble. In the present time of your worrying, in the present time of uh, disbelief or doubt, God said, I got you. Just look unto me. And, you know, as I um, began to continue to write the book, God said, there's so many people out there that haven't tapped into their gift that I've given them. What is your gift? What is your calling? Well, the first thing is, what is it you like to do? What is it that you would do and you would do it wholeheartedly for free? Well, Number one, mine is kids. I will watch people's kids, not for free, really, because I want to get paid. 
Not as a kid, I got paid for watching somebody's daycare kid or watching my cousins, they paid me. However, because I loved it so much, I taught Sunday school as a teenager. I um, did vacation Bible school as a teenager. I did camps for free because I love teaching and I love working with the youth. So it wasn't by happen chance that when I got older that I began to um, want to work at a daycare center and wanted to open up my own daycare center because it was already in me. That was my gift. That was my calling. And the other thing is I love to talk. You probably wouldn't even have to pay me to ever talk on somebody's program, somebody's TV, somebody's radio station. It's great to get a paycheck. But if it's something you love, it's, if it's your passion, you'll do it for free. You'll do it for free. I'm at work and people say, Wendy, can you get on the intercom? Oh, sure, give me, give me the intercom. You, you hear my voice all over the intercom. Because I love talking. I love speaking life. I love encouraging people. So if I can encourage you today, know that whatever you're going through, nothing's too impossible for God to get you out of the situation. Get your hustle on. Whatever it is, you want a, a better job, you want a, a, a better vehicle, you want a better house, get that credit score together. Some jobs now require you to have a good credit score so you can just work in that company. Get it together. Creditkarma.com. Any other credit um, uh, you, you, uh, useful tool that you can get to so you can check your credit. I know credit cards now um, give that, uh, that free for you if you're their customer. Check your credit. I check it monthly now. That's my new game. I want my score to go up at least three points every month. That's my new uh, goal, to get that score up every month. Every time I check it, I'm like, oh, went up. I opened up uh, a new account, and my score went down five points. I was like, oh, no. But then the next month, it went back up. So see, it went down five points, but then it went back up, whatever the reason was that it did that. But I was eager. I didn't get disappointed because it went down. What I did the next month was use less credit, paid off some other credit, and the score continues to go up. You got to do your part. Get that hustle on. Check things out. Understand that when you're checking on it, that means you're concerned. When you check on your kids, you're concerned about your kids. When you check on your uh, family members, that means you're concerned about them. Be concerned about what it is you need to do in your life. You want things to prosper and do, get better for you? Check on it. Check on it. You haven't updated your resume? Check on that. Update your resume. Get, thing, get the ball rolling. Get things going so that you can advance. And I want you to understand also that I don't care what your age is, it's a great thing to still be living here on this earth. It's never too late. It's never too late to do what it is God has called you to do on this earth. So if you're still living, you're still breathing, get busy. Get busy, get busy, get busy. Jesus was always about his father's business. When his mother and his father on earth was looking for him, he said, do you know I'll be about my father's business? He wasn't even a teenager yet. He said, I'm about my father's business. He was missing in action for a couple of days. His parents didn't know where he was at. They all concerned. He said, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? Sons and daughters, be about your father's business. He needs you to be the mouthpiece here on this earth. If God showed up right now, people would be running and scattering in every direction. Out of fear, probably, because they want, number one, they probably wouldn't be ready. To go with him, number two, because they wouldn't understand what they're looking at. And number three, because they've heard so many other things concerning God, lowercase g. It was not what they were expecting. So because you're here on this earth, he wants to use you. You're his tool. You're his ambassador here on the earth. Get busy. Speak to the people. Minister to the people. Prophesy to the people. Speak life to the people. Hallelujah. God told me to tell his people, if you just trust in him, believe in him, understand that he is the God of everything, ruler over this whole earth, but you just got to trust and believe. That's called a faith walk. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11 and 6, you got to believe, you got to trust. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. If it wasn't so, it would never have been written in our book. In our Bible, we need to trust him. We need to believe that he, it is so. We need to believe that he is a mighty God. We need to believe that it will come to pass if we just believe and trust him. Do you know what God has called him to do? So when God has called you to do something, 
Do it with a passion. Do it with understanding. Do it with love. When you do it with love, it can't fail because it's in your heart. And it's what it is God wants you to do. When you're doing it concerning what God has called you to do, go to God about you. Have you ever just looked in the mirror and said, who is this that I'm looking at? Who are you? What are you? Look in the mirror one day and say, God, I am who you said I am. I'm going to do what you told me to do. I'm going to be obedient. This person that I'm looking at in the mirror right now, I'm going to be an obedient child of God because you've called me to rise up and do your will your way. God, you're a mighty God, and I just thank you, Lord Jesus, because you created me. You blessed me to see a new day. And I just want to say thank you, Lord God. Seek God in everything that you do, seeking early and often. God told me to begin to get up before the sunrise. And Pastor had preached this some time ago. He said, get up early before the dew of the sun, before the rising of the sun and the dew was still out on the grass. I woke up early, early, early. And I said, well, God, this is awesome how you put something in my spirit. And when I'm obedient, you're a blessing to me. And then I can be a blessing to others. So when we're obedient, it's not about what we can do just for ourselves, but it's being a blessing to others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. God needs you to do his will, his way. Therefore, when you get up, be busy about God. Be about God's business. Pastor, did you find it for me? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was waiting for you to get that for me. Get excited about what God's word is in you. Do you have the word of God already planted down on the inside, inside of you and ready to come out? Are you excited about what he's doing in you? And that your past is already the past, but your present is what we want to look forward to so that God can keep using you and so God can keep working in you, so God can keep letting you know that he's in control of it all. You're blessed to be a blessing. And God loves you for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, I told you three, but it's Luke 2 and 49. Hallelujah. Luke 2 and 49 reads as thus. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? This is his parents. This is what he's saying to his parents after his parents have found him. Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? In 50. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And in 51, and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. In 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and with man. See, sometimes people won't even understand what's going on in your life. But long as you know what God has told you to do, as long as you understand what it is you're supposed to do in your life, it doesn't matter what it looks like to everybody else. Jesus was about his father's business at a young age. And because he was about his father's business, he increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man in Luke 2.52. Increase, increase. God is about increasing. God is about leaping you over bounds of every mountain that you may come in contact with. When there's a mountain in front of you, leap over it. Leap over it. You may have to climb a little bit, but once you get to the top, leap, leap, leap. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Do what it is you're supposed to do for God and go forward with the power and demonstration and continue to be blessed of the Lord because God is an awesome God and God is the one that is in control of it all. And we love him for what he's doing here on this earth. See, when it doesn't look like God is in control, step back and begin to pray harder. Step back and begin to get on your knees And understand that he's in control of it all. Step back and listen. Step back and look at it with your spiritual eye and not with your natural eye. God continue to bless you and keep you. And let his light shine continuous on you this day and forevermore in Jesus' name. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 God is in control. Luke 2, 49 and 52. Continue to be blessed of the Lord in Jesus name. If there's anyone on today who desires prayer, please come forth. If there's anyone who desires prayer, please come